Intel's Z590 chipset is here along with their new 11th generation of CPUs and there is a lot new from PCI Gen 4 support to faster RAM and a lot more so let's take a look at what's new, what CPUs are supported and what features those CPUs offer and a lot else to cover so let's get into it. But first a message from this video sponsor Azrock. Their brand new Z590 boards are here, including this, their new Z590 Steel Legend. It supports both Intel's 10th and 11th generation CPUs, features 14-phase Dr. Moss power design, PCI Gen 4 M.2 SSD support, Wi-Fi 6E, and ASRock's new graphics card holder that comes included in the box. Find out more about it at the link in the description below. So, Z590. This is an incremental upgrade over last year's Z490 motherboards using the same LGA1200 socket, which does mean that both the 11th generation CPUs that are just launching and last year's 10th generation CPUs both are supported in these new boards. That does also mean that along with a suitable BIOS upgrade, Z490 boards will also support those newer 11th gen chips. Z590 does have some distinct advantages over the older Z490 boards, specifically its new amounts of connectivity. Starting with PCIe Gen 4, this is run from the CPU, but is a little bit more optimized in this platform. So, with the top M.2 slot, generally speaking, that should now be routed to the CPU, much like AMD's Ryzen boards, uh, for full PCIe Gen 4 connectivity. Also, the top are then the main X16 sized slots that aren't often directly routed to the CPU anyway. Those should also be uh, operating at PCI Gen 4, so that if you want to use add-in cards or, of course, the new PCI Gen 4 graphics cards, those should work in these boards just fine. Another advantage over the 400 series boards is the link to the chipset. Intel, unlike AMD, use a semi-proprietary connection called DMI between the CPU and the chipsets themselves. And while the DMI link is pretty similar to PCIe, and in fact, it's DMI 3.0, much like PCIe Gen 3, and is a DMI 3.0 X4, much like PCIe Gen 3 X4, and very similar bandwidths there, potentially because of that proprietary nature or maybe backwards compatibility or whatever else, the chipset link is now an eight lane wide connection rather than the four lane wide that we've seen on pretty much all of their previous boards. What that means is that you get double the bandwidth between the CPU and the chipsets, meaning you could run two full speed PCIe Gen 3 SSDs without any bottlenecks. Now do bear in mind that things like Wi-Fi cards, SATA ports, and some of the rear I.O. will all be channeled through the chipset as well, so that won't technically be true. You will still have a little bit of bottlenecking if you were to be using two uh, Gen 3 SSDs through the chipset, but the fact that you can now, in theory, run a Gen 4 SSD in the top slot and two Gen 3 SSDs in the lower slots without too much in the way of bottlenecks is definitely an upgrade. Along with more bandwidth, Intel has also added USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2x2, the 20 gigabit per second one, uh, as default built into the chipset, which means that uh, you no longer need third-party controllers from people like Asmedia to have that support. What that means is that most motherboards, if not all, should be coming with USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, the 20 gigabit per second ports, uh, as standard, it won't need to be an added feature that the motherboard vendors need to, to bake in separately. They've also added support for Thunderbolt 4 natively, which while very similar to Thunderbolt 3, it still uses the USB Type-C connector and is still a 40 gigabit per second port. Now that Thunderbolt 4 is rolled under the USB consortium standard and should offer better longer term compatibility. And along with the Z590 chipset, Intel is making a thorough push for 2.5 gigabit LAN. That means that while we're already seeing 2.5 gig LAN being pretty widely available on a number of boards across the market, including last year's Z490 boards, because Intel is actually pushing this and there may be some sort of combo deal between the, the chipset and an Intel branded um, network interface, 
that should be a lot more common with the Z590 boards, including this ASRock one. And finally, on the RAM speed side of things, because Intel has upgraded the effectively factory supported RAM speed from 2933 on 10th gen chips to 3200 MHz on 11th gen chips, Motherboard vendors are now building their support around 3200 MHz as their sort of base frequency. Of course, you can still run both lower and higher frequencies, although if you're running higher, do bear in mind that still does void your CPU's warranty. Although if you're worried, you can buy Intel's protection plan if you're uh, that way inclined. There is one more thing to note in terms of the forwards and backwards compatibility. Using an older 10th gen chip in one of these new boards will not allow you to access any of the new features like PCI Gen 4 or I believe the expanded link to the chipset. The PCI Gen 4 support is built into the chip itself, much like AMD's Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series processors, which means that, like I said, those older chips won't magically enable support for PCI Gen 4 in these new boards. Conversely, using a new chip in an older Z490 board will enable PCI Gen 4 support to the main X16 slots that are directly connected to the CPU. There is a caveat here that, as far as I'm aware, the chipset link uh, doesn't get expanded automatically here. It is still an X4 DMI 3.0 link to the chipset on those older boards, which means that you won't get access to PCI Gen 4 speeds through the chipset, nor will you get access to that added bandwidth. And finally, I should also make it clear that most Z490 boards, all of the M.2 slots on them were routed through the chipsets, which means that you won't be able to use PCI Gen 4 storage at full speed on those order boards, even with the newer chips. So that's a look at Intel Z590 chipsets and the forwards and backwards compatibility that they offer. If you have any questions, do feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And I would love to hear your thoughts in those comments down below too about the new boards, about the new CPUs, anything at all, let me know. If you're interested in checking out the boards and new CPUs, I'm gonna leave links to them in the description down below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and when you watch this because it can and does vary. There's also gonna be a whole load of other links in the description you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs. There's, access, uh, there's Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chats and sponsor free videos. And of course you support me directly as well. And there's a load of other links for people like Overclaws UK if you're buying from there, VPN options and a load of other stuff. So feel free to check it out. Otherwise, there are plenty of other videos that you can check out on the end cards. Maybe check out the Z490 Explained video to get caught up on that one. And that's pretty much it. As I said, if you've got any questions, do leave those in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed for more videos like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we'll see you on the next video.